Hi everyone. Uh, to follow on the video on single degrees of freedom, uh, I decided to do a little test uh, on a little bit of code from Python that then I'll share with you and you guys can, can play with. Uh, and uh, this video is to show uh, what we can do with this code. So in this particular example, I'm going to use the resonance library that was developed by Jason Moore and Kenneth Lyons. I'll put the link in the description in case if you want to have a look into their library and how can you create your own uh, uh, animations. If you're, if you're a teacher as well, you can create a lot of cool stuff uh, with it. Uh, I'm also going to show you how you can play with it, uh, with, uh, with the code that I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to give you the link to my GitHub where you can find the file here, which is this custom SDOF system Luis Santos. And then you can uh, download here at this with this button. Okay. If you don't know how to run a Python Jupyter notebook, I also have a video about it, and you can check that out uh, to to learn how to do it. So in this example, we are gonna define the stiffness k of the spring, and we're gonna define the mass m uh, in kilograms, and then the spring in newtons per meter, so that everything is consistent. And we're also gonna define an initial position and initial velocity. So from the, the video about single degrees of freedom, we are going to be testing uh, how the mass moves and confirming that it indeed moves according to the equation of motion that we derived in that video. So the idea here is just to define this. So uh, stiffness k, uh, 8,000, mass 2,000, initial position 4, and initial velocity 0. If you run the code, uh, this basically calculates, um, calculates amplitude, uh, maximum velocity, maximum acceleration. It also calculates the circular natural frequency, but most importantly, it helps us plot uh, the, the curves and also do a little animation of the mass vibrating. So this took a little bit to run, uh, mainly because of this parameter here that I decided to plot the response for 10 seconds. So when you play with this um, script, I recommend you only changing the numbers here at the beginning so stiffness, mass, position, and velocity. And if you want, uh, change only this 10 here, because that gives you the time of the, of the response that this is being calculated. So once this is all done, we have here a very neat animation of our mass. So we can see that the spring uh, is being stretched, and the rested position of the spring is here at 0. So we have an initial position of 4. And once we start the animation, this is going to start uh, oscillating and we can see right away that the time it takes for a full oscillation is around 3.14 if you remember from the previous video that was in the example we calculated that was the the natural period of our of our motion so this is working fine and if we keep on going this oscillation just keeps on on going until you get to the 10 seconds that we use to to calculate uh, another interesting thing is because we don't have damping, we know that the motion of the mass is bounded between minus 4 and 4. So this just keeps on going. And if we calculate more seconds, this will just keep on uh, oscillating like that. So I'm just going to stop it here. And now I just want to go through with you uh, to these three curves. So these curves plot um, the position in blue, the acceleration in orange, and then the velocity in, in green. And what's interesting to note here is something that goes along with the theory, and it's very important that you understand and you can combine theory and the, the physical uh, motion of the body. So indeed, in the beginning of the motion, at time equals zero, the mass is at position four, right? We can check it here in the, in the oscillation, but also check it that in the plot, this says that this starts here at, at four. Now, another interesting thing is that the velocity is zero which also makes sense because that's our initial velocity in this case. And when the motion begins, the position starts decreasing, right? Position starts decreasing, goes through zero, and then eventually goes to the negative range of the, of the displacement. And this is this first half a wave that you can see here. It goes from plus four to minus four. And what happens to the acceleration in that time? When the position is positive, the acceleration is negative. And they're both maximum at the same time, which also makes sense because the energy that the spring can offer is maximum when the displacement of the mass is maximum. So in this position, 
the spring is really, really, really compressed. So it has lots of energy, lots of elastic energy that wants to release uh, back in, into, the, into the mass. So it's, it's this force that causes the acceleration, right? Now, if we go to the other side, this is where the spring is at the maximum uh, tension. So it again has the maximum acceleration in the mass. And what is interesting is when the mass is on the right, the acceleration pushes to the left. So it kind of makes sense that when the blue curve is positive, the orange curve is negative and they are maximum on the same position. Now, let's think about velocity. When is the velocity maximum in this oscillation? We know that the velocity is zero when the mass goes either to minus four or plus four, but then the velocity is maximum when it passes through zero, it passes through that position in, in the middle. And this again is seen here in this um, uh, green curve. So indeed we can see that this starts at zero when the position of the mass is four. And when it's minus four, the velocity is also zero. And when is the velocity maximum? Is maximum when the position, and by the way, the acceleration is zero, which kind of makes sense because they are the derivative of, of one another. Now, what else can we change about this code? So one thing I, I can suggest you doing is removing the initial position to, to zero and maybe put an initial velocity, let's say of, of eight, and you run it again. And just to save a little bit of time, let's just run it in five seconds instead of 10. So this has run now, took a little bit of time again, so be ready for that when you, when you test it. Um, here we can see that the initial position is now zero, but the initial velocity is uh, eight. And if you remember from the calculation of the amplitude, we're gonna do V zero divided by omega n squared, and then do the square root. So what we're gonna do is that eight divided by two, so then we're gonna see that the amplitude in this case is also uh, four meters. So if we start and checking the vibration, nothing too, too special about it is now that the only difference is that it starts at zero, but it starts with an initial velocity. And again, the plots show this right away. The blue curve starts at zero. Acceleration is also zero, but then the velocity is maximum at this point, and it's equal to, to eight meters per second. The last uh, example I want to show you is we are gonna just go to the stiffness, and instead of 8,000, we're gonna add it a little bit more, let's say 18,000. So we can see right away that the circular natural frequency becomes three radians per second instead of two, which means that our response has a higher frequency. And again, when we run the, the oscillation, again for five seconds, we can see now that the oscillation becomes a little bit faster than before. Uh, so more waves can fit into the five seconds, uh, but again, the same logic applies. We start with zero and then we have an initial velocity. It's just that now the frequency is a little bit higher. Now, one thing that I want you to see is what happened with the acceleration and the velocity when you increase the frequency. So we can see that before the maximum amplitude was four and now is uh, 2.6. So we can see that indeed increasing the stiffness decreases the displacement, which makes sense, right? If we think about in a structure, right? If we consider the examples that we looked in the, into the video before, if we increase the, the stiffness of the column, obviously the displacements of the mass are gonna be more restrained, so they are gonna be uh, smaller. But there's an interesting consequence here, is that if we check the maximum acceleration, in this case is 24, while if we decrease again to 8,000 and run it again, we will see that the maximum acceleration is 16. So even though we decrease the displacement of the top of the body, which is a good thing, right? One disadvantage is that the frequency of the motion is going to be faster, which means that if there's a person there, for example, here in the example of the control tower, the person is going to feel the motion a lot more than before, even though the motion in terms of displacement is smaller. So we need to take into consideration these two things when we design uh, structures and mainly high-rise buildings, where obviously if you sell the, the penthouse of a high-rise building, you don't want the... the person living there to be feeling the acceleration uh, under the wind or under earthquake. And this is something to, to have in mind when you design the structure. So that's it for today. Feel free to download the, the files that I, that I gave you. The links are in the description. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. And finally, thank you to the people that developed this uh, Resonance API. 
so Jason Moore and Kenneth Lyons that allowed me to, to do this video uh, with uh, a lot faster than it would to code this all by myself. So thank you for watching and have a good day.